In complex analysis, a branch of mathematics, analytic continuation is a technique to extend the domain of a given analytic function. Analytic continuation often succeeds in defining further values of a function. For example in a new region where an infinite series representation in terms of which it is initially defined becomes divergent. The stepwise continuation technique may, however, come up against difficulties. These may have an essentially topological nature, leading to inconsistencies. They may alternatively have to do with the presence of mathematical singularities. The case of several complex variables is rather different, since singularities then need not be isolated points and its investigation was a major reason for the development of sheaf cohomology. Initial discussion. Suppose f is an analytic function defined on a non-empty open subset U of the complex plane C. In other words, the restriction of f to U is the function f we started with. Analytic continuations are unique in the following sense. If V is the connected domain of two analytic functions F1 and F2 such that U is contained in V and for all Z in U F1 equals F2 equals F, then F1 equals F2 on all of V. This is because F1 minus F2 is an analytic function which vanishes on the open, connected domain U of F and hence must vanish on its entire domain. This follows directly from the identity theorem for holomorphic functions. Applications A common way to define functions in complex analysis proceeds by first specifying the function on a small domain only, and then extending it by analytic continuation. In practice, this continuation is often done by first establishing some functional equation on the small domain and then using this equation to extend the domain. Examples are the Riemann zeta function and the gamma function. The concept of a universal cover was first developed to define a natural domain for the analytic continuation of an analytic function. The idea of finding the maximal analytic continuation of a function in turn led to the development of the idea of Riemann surfaces. The power series defined below is generalized by the idea of a germ. The general theory of analytic continuation and its generalizations are known as sheaf theory. Formal definition of a germ. Let be a power series converging in the disk drive, R greater than zero, defined by. Note that without loss a generality, here and below, we will always assume that a maximal such R was chosen, even if that R is infinity. Also note that it would be equivalent to begin with an analytic function defined on some small open set. We say that the vector is a germ of F, the base G0 of G is Z0, the stem of G is and the top G1 of G is alpha 0 the top of G is the value of F at Z0. Any vector G equals is a germ if it represents a power series of an analytic function around Z0 with some radius of convergence R greater than 0. Therefore, we can safely speak of the set of germs. The topology of the set of germs. Let G and H be germs. If H0 minus G0 less than R where R is the radius of convergence of G and if the power series defined by G and H specify identical functions on the intersection of the two domains, then we say that H is generated by G and we write G H. This compatibility condition is neither transitive, symmetric nor anti-symmetric. If we extend the relation by transitivity, we obtain a symmetric relation, which is therefore also an equivalence relation on germs. This extension by transitivity is one definition of analytic continuation. The equivalence relation will be denoted. We can define a topology on let R greater than zero and let the sets A for all R greater than zero and G define a basis of open sets for the topology on a connected component of is called a sheaf. We also note that the map defined by phi G equals H0 from A to C where R is the radius of convergence of G is a chart. The set of such charts forms an atlas for hence is a Riemann surface. 
is sometimes called the universal analytic function. Examples of analytic continuation is a power series corresponding to the natural logarithm near z equals 1. This power series can be turned into a germ. This germ has a radius of convergence of 1, and so there is a sheaf s corresponding to it. This is the sheaf of the logarithm function. The uniqueness theorem for analytic functions also extends to sheaves of analytic functions. If the sheaf of an analytic function contains the zero germ then the entire sheaf is zero. Armed with this result, we can see that if we take any germ g of the sheaf s of the logarithm function, as described above, and turn it into a power series f then this function will have the property that exp equals z. If we had decided to use a version of the inverse function theorem for analytic functions, we could construct a wide variety of inverses for the exponential map, but we would discover that they are all represented by some German s. In that sense, s is the one true inverse of the exponential map. In older literature, sheaves of analytic functions were called multivalued functions. See sheaf for the general concept. Natural boundary. Suppose that a power series has radius of convergence R and defines an analytic function f inside that disk. Consider points on the circle of convergence. A point for which there is a neighborhood on which f has an analytic extension is regular, otherwise singular. The circle is a natural boundary if all its points are singular. More generally, we may apply the definition to any open connected domain on which f is analytic and classify the points of the boundary of the domain as regular or singular. The domain boundary is then a natural boundary if all points are singular, in which case the domain is a domain of holomorphy. Monodromy theorem The monodromy theorem gives a sufficient condition for the existence of a direct analytic continuation. Suppose d is an open set in C, and f an analytic function on d. If g is a simply connected domain containing d, such that f has an analytic continuation along every path in g, starting from some fixed pointer in d, then f has a direct analytic continuation to g. In the above language this means that if g is a simply connected domain, and s is a sheaf whose set of base points contains g, then there exists an analytic function f on g whose germs belong to s. Hadamard's gap theorem for a power series with the circle of convergence is a natural boundary. Such a power series is called lacunary. This theorem has been substantially generalized by Eugen Fabry and George Pollier. Pollier's theorem. Let be a power series, then there exists epsilon k minus 1, 1, such that has the convergence disk of f around z0 as a natural boundary. The proof of this theorem makes use of Hadamard's gap theorem.